Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and welcome to Nigel. episode edition of book positivity i figured we would change it up a little bit this week and talk about happy things good things positive news in the bookish community it has been a lot the last few months really with the negative news so i figured i would change it up even though there is other tea brewing it's just gonna have to wait i are gonna focus on the positive for this week so i did ask on instagram for people to give me some happy bookish news and some things I got related to them personally, some about the bookish community. So I'm just gonna go through those things, share whatever relevant tweets or screenshots that I have, and we can all just be happy for a moment, okay? So first, I have The Legend Born by Tracy Dion is back on the New York Times bestseller list after it was gone for three months. So that's exciting. I've heard nothing but great things about that book. I definitely need to read it. I think it's like a King Arthur retelling, but kind of like a remix with something else. I don't know. I've heard great things and I definitely need to read it. <clears throat> then a young adult book, Tiny Pretty Things, that's written by Danielle Clayton and Sona Cherapatra, has released on Netflix. So it got its own adaptation and I've been seeing it everywhere on Twitter. I obviously see it on Netflix as well. And I've been hearing some interesting things about it, but it's always exciting when books get adapted to television or film. So that's positive. And in the realm of adaptations, Clap When You Land, that's by Elizabeth Acevedo, is being adapted into a television show. So this is her latest release. I read this one. It was really great. I really loved it. And um, she wrote this book as a dedication to the lives lost on America, American Airlines Flight 587. It was bound for the Dominican Republic when it crashed in Queens, New York. This happened in 2001 um, when she was 13. And this book... Uh, is in two perspectives two girls who share a father but they don't know so they don't they find out through his death on this flight that they are sisters and that their father had another life it's really good I highly recommend it so I'm definitely interested to see how that adapts to tv I feel like it would be better as a movie but I don't know still exciting nonetheless and then another um Adaptation is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid is apparently being adapted for a television show or a movie. I can't remember, but it's for free form. So I don't, you know, I don't know about that. I feel like there's a little bit more, a little more raciness to The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo than what I've seen on free form, but we don't know. Still exciting. That is one of the most popular books um, in the last couple of years. I definitely really enjoyed it. And so it'll be interesting to see how that adaptation turns out. Someone commented about how there's so many amazing 2021 releases and I concur. Um, I also want to shout out Kat on Bookstagram. Their handle is Bookstagram Represent because they are always compiling and putting out these awesome lists list of books like they have one for books with pansexual rep and then book lists for 2021 and that includes queer releases diverse middle grade releases black releases uh trans non-binary stories coming out next year so they do an amazing job and it's very helpful because they compile them into one post that you can obviously save on instagram and it's so nice because if you're like me and your phone is filled with too many screenshots so you don't have to screenshot every book that you think about and you can just go save it on Instagram. And I know you're like, well, the logical thing is just go put it on your Goodreads. Well, I don't do that, okay? So <laughs> check out Kat on Instagram, an incredible resource. But yes, there are so many amazing books coming out next year. The covers are just snatching my edges left and right. And I'm sure that we'll get more covers as the year goes on. And it's just, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good year. I feel it. 
there was another adaptation news. This is for Thomas Sia Booker. So she is self-published and CEO of Hay Carter Incorporated, where she publishes children's books. Um, they were inspired by her son, and she writes them to promote self-confidence and pride among children three to five. So she was the only self-published author to strike a deal and negotiate with Netflix and have her book um, the, on their show Bookmark celebrating black voices and it was read by Jill Scott. So I think that's so awesome that she not only was publishing her own work, but you know, negotiated a deal with Netflix. So that's a big deal. I love this one. It said Stephen King finally did not win the Goodreads Horror Award. Um, that went to Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. So that's a yay. Every year Stephen King has a book, whether it's truly horror or not, in the horror category and he usually wins. And this year Mexican Gothic won. So a woman won, a woman of color won. So that is definitely a win for everybody. So this is follow up to one of my tea videos about author Joan He. So a few weeks ago I talked about Descendant of the Crane which is her first book. It was published under Albert Whitman and they were not paying her. They were withholding um, her royalties. They basically they basically broke the contract. They weren't following what they had agreed to but she updated on Twitter the rights of Descendant of the Crane are hers again and I'll put this image here because it says please do not buy it unless it's the following version. So I think that it is the United Kingdom rights because in a follow-up tweet um, it says when I said we were working hard to rehome Daughter of the Crane in the US I meant it please wait for me and it at its next home. So it definitely she owns the rights in the UK so I think if you want a copy to order through what's in the photo I can also link down below and then obviously pre-ordering her next book will definitely help but she also had a GoFundMe to raise for legal fees and she said um her final legal bill was nine thousand four hundred forty nine dollars but she reached forty eight hundred dollars already and she promised that she'd donate any extra funds after fifty percent of her legal bills were covered to the authors guild so she is going to be doing that so that's really exciting and um so she got the rights back in the uk she's working on it in the us she's got another book coming out in 2021 so those are all very exciting things i'm glad that that worked it's sad that this is what it took and that they couldn't just honor the contract to begin with but still positive news now i hope that soon we will hear about alan dean foster um with disney and hopefully they are giving him his due coin this is exciting to me even though i haven't read the graphic novels but lock and key which are graphic novels written by what's his name owen king Owen Joe Hill, Joe Hill, who is the son of Stephen King and illustrated by Gabriel Rodriguez um, is a show on Netflix. There's only one season so far and I loved it. I didn't read the graphic novels and I don't plan to, but I love the show. I love Bodie and Rufus so much, but season two is coming in 2021 and it's already been renewed for a third season. So hopefully the second season is just as good, if not better than the first one, because I loved it. I probably rewatch it, but that was just really exciting to me. So I wanted to share, I wanted to share that. Also, I wanted to shout out Stacey Abrams, okay, a true queen. So if you don't know, Stacey Abrams um, was running for governor of Georgia and she was scammed out of that. But she has been on the forefront of getting people registered, especially black voters registered in Georgia. Um, she's definitely the one to thank for Biden winning Georgia. And she also writes romance novels. Yes, queen. She's written eight romance novels under the pen name Selena Montgomery. And so I'm like, I definitely need to check that out. And she has another book coming out next year, but it's going to be a political thriller. Um, I think adult under her name, Stacey Abrams, and it's called While Justice Sleeps. So that's definitely going to be on my most anticipated list for my adult books that'll be coming soon. But I just thought it was amazing. And in related bookish news, Romancing the Runoff um, has raised $475,000 for the Georgia Senate runoff. So now that we've passed, if you're not in the United States, now that we've passed our presidential election, now Senate seats are up um, next year. And the voting has already started in Georgia and Georgia has really crucial spots that need to go to Democrats. So it's an amazing group of romance writers, Courtney Milan, Alyssa Cole, and Kit Roca, which is made up of Brie and Donna got together to say like, hey, let's help Stacey Abrams in her quest to flip the Senate. 
um, in Georgia. So the people running in Georgia. So I know this is segueing a little bit, but in Georgia, the runoffs are between Senator David Perdue versus John Ossoff. Perdue is 71 and Ossoff is 33. I don't want to be ageist, but for our government, our government is too goddamn old. And so I, he doesn't need to be running. He's also one of the richest members of Congress. So that's already a red flag and he needs to go. So Ossoff is younger. He's 33, a documentary filmmaker. So I'm already rooting for him there. And then also there is Senator Kelly Loeffler versus Raphael Warnock. And Loeffler is, um, let's see, her husband is the chief executive of the New York Stock Exchange parent company. She's a Trump loyalist. And so gross, we're already done with her. And so anyway, these group, this group of romance authors wanted to support Stacey Abrams, who is still, you know, very much campaigning to get people registered to vote if they didn't get to vote in time for the November election so that we can get these people out and get Democrats into these Senate seats. And since Stacey Abrams is also a romance writer, that's why they did romancing the runoff and they um, auctioned off, I think, like manuscripts and signed books and, um, and arcs and things like that to raise money and they've raised four hundred seventy five thousand dollars and that is freaking amazing and i think the money is still coming in the election is soon i think people have already started voting i think it's like january 5th so it's just been incredible all the funds that they raised went towards um black voters matter fair fight and the new georgia project so kudos big ups to those ladies and um i'm just very proud so I just think that's amazing and that just shows you the power, the might, the generosity of the romance community. They're amazing. Also, uh, bookshop.org, which you hear me promote a lot, which is basically like a website and interface where you can shop from local independent bookstores, whether they're near you or not, has raised $10 million for local independent bookstores this year. So I think that is so exciting, so amazing. Every time I went on there to buy books, I would see the number up top um, slowly ticking up and now they've hit 10, mil 10 million. So that is just incredible. And it feels good that I helped a little bit, I mean a little bit <laughs> towards that goal. And then also I wanted to shout out to some booktubers. So I, you've heard me talk about some of them before, but books like Whoa, which is Mara, Bookish Realm, Ashley, uh, Beautifully Bookish Bethany, which is Bethany, My Name is Marines, Marines, Locked Book Titian, Brie, and Josh's Book Voyage, Josh. They did a panel discussion video, I think it was live, and they talked about how to read diversely. And I watched it and took so many notes because they gave so much good information. So they talk about why it's important to read diverse, like what exactly is the definition of reading diversely, which is essentially reading stories that don't, about people who are not you, who are different um, from different backgrounds, different sexualities, different religions, all these different things. Uh, and they give ways to incorporate more into your reading. Like it doesn't need to be suddenly, you need to read a uh, hundred diverse books every year. So they give sustainable ways and, and different, like they weren't all the same. Some people had ways they track, some people did it um, a little less. It was just more of a yes or no. So, so many great tips in the video. And then they gave recommendations on all the genres. And um, I've been watching it slowly while I've been like cooking or cleaning and having it on and then having to pause and, and write down the books they're recommending. But it's definitely amazing. I think you should check it out. It was a great video. I tried so hard to stay up for it, but <laughs> the live is at like 2.30 a.m. my time and like 11 o'clock, like I was in pain. I couldn't keep my eyes open. <laughs> my body was like, we need to go to sleep. So unfortunately I couldn't be there in real time, but I'm glad that you can always replay them the next day. So I will link that video down below as, as well as all of their channels. So I just really appreciated that because one of my goals is to um, read more diversely next year. Oh, and that also includes translated work. They talked about that too. I got some great recommendations there and I have so many tabs open on my, my laptop right now with all these different book lists but it definitely is a worth a watch slash listen, whatever. Sometimes I just put a video on while I'm doing things. I definitely think you should check it out. Um, we should all be striving to add in more diverse work. It can only help us only make our reading experience better. So please check that out. 
And finally, it is the end of the year. So end of the year videos are starting to pop up. Best of, most disappointing, most surprising, and of course my favorite, worst books. I, <laughs> so I'm sorry if you were let down that this was not the, Don't be trying to get me. Nobody wants to see you. They want to see Nyla only. <laughs> I keep it cute. We tell the people bye bye. Okay, so we will be back next week with our normal community. This week we just wanted to spice it up, give you a little happiness for the holidays. So please comment below anything happy, positive, book related, exciting. If you hit a personal goal, if you read a really great book, whatever, share it down below and we will see you next week. But please give this video a like and subscribe so you can see more of me and Nigel and our shenanigans, right? But if you celebrate any kind of holiday, happy holidays. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on our next one. Bye. You already ate. What you looking for? You want a treat? Mm. All the people always say that you deserve all the treats. They are correct sometimes. Sit down, please. Thank you. Okay. The yummy. Oh, Jesus. I know you did that on purpose. You knew I was still recording. You so you're so desperate.